During Thursday's January 6th committee hearing, testimony from former first daughter Ivanka Trump basically undercut her father's claims about the 2020 election being stolen, rigged, whatever you want to say. Uh, in fact, it's really quick, but pretty much sums it up. Take a look. How did that affect your perspective about the election when Attorney General Barr made that statement? It affected my perspective. Um, I respect Attorney General Barr. Um, so I accepted what he said was saying. I accepted what he said. Uh, now, again, this isn't a reference to testimony from former Attorney General William Barr. So he was at the Justice Department. He investigated claims of mass voter fraud and found absolutely nothing. No evidence. Nothing. Uh, no mass amounts of dead people voting. No mass uh, evidence of, you know, undocumented immigrants coming over and voting. Chinese hackers Iranians, uh, you know, the, the ghost of Hugo Chavez. Villains of, in Venezuela. Uh, no, uh, you know, it's Jewish space lasers, nothing like that. Nothing like that. He found absolutely nothing in that regard. Bullshit. He found nothing. It, it was all bullshit. Uh, so, look, we did find some isolated I uh, incidences of voter fraud, yes, across the country. In fact, um, one place, the Villages, which is a retirement community in Florida, had a few cases. I think four people were arrested in Wisconsin as well, or five people, a few people in the Villages. Just, you know, a handful, basically. These isolated uh, instances across the country mainly saw people who were Trump voters voting twice or using their dead relatives to vote. Uh, and, of course... Uh, one person that had, uh, claimed that his dead wife's vote was stolen. Well, he was right about that. He stole it and used it to vote for Trump. Now, had she been alive, she probably would have voted for Trump anyway, but she was dead. Therefore, kind of ineligible. I'm sorry, but unless, I, I guess unless you have necromantic powers to bring people back and then have them vote. I, again, it, it, it just doesn't work out. It just doesn't work out. So, again, and look, by the way, I, I the, when it comes to voter fraud, personal anecdotes, right? Um, that's, that's how many there are. You can have a personal anecdote. Uh, I'd heard that uh, one of the women's in a group home for the disabled that somebody I know worked at, um, there's a woman with mental and physical disabilities. She was essentially forced by her brother to vote for Trump. She didn't know what she was doing. She didn't know what she was voting for. She didn't know who, you know, again, she was severely mentally and physically handicapped. And he's like, no, you're going to vote for Trump because I vote for Trump. Oh, great. Again, that's a personal anecdote. And by the way, that would be considered voter fraud because if you fill out someone else's ballot without being able to, you know, get authorized as being an advocate, which would then under law allow you to fill out a ballot for someone else with their express permission. Uh, I don't think that happened in that situation. Okay. But again, one example, one anecdote, very vague in the details. And again, you can ask people, yeah, there's, there's plenty of that uh, anecdotes that people can come across. But that's not evidence. That's not enough to prove mass voter fraud. Because if there was mass voter fraud, there would be there would be evidence of it. It would be well documented, especially since we are able to in this country be able to find incidences of voter fraud individually. So. And if they can find those and arrest those people you would think that it would be much easier to find the mass voter fraud. And look, the numbers are so small that Wisconsin found about 10 cases total. 10. You know how many uh, votes were cast? Just in Wisconsin, one state, 3.2 million. 
millions and millions and hundreds of millions of votes. It is infinitesimally small. Something around, what, 0.000001% voter fraud rate? Come on. There's just, again, no evidence. But it, it, hey, and by the way, if you are going to use this claim, and this was the problem with Trump, that the election was rigged in order to try to stay into power, then you should at least have some receipts. You should bring some goddamn evidence. Because if you don't have the evidence, and if you know you're lying about it, and you know you don't have the evidence, and you're using that to stay in power anyway, to prevent a peaceful transfer of power, well, guess what that is? That's a coup. That's an attempted takeover. And that's illegal. Can't do that. And by the way, nobody with two functional brain cells wants to be implicated in a coup. Now, if you don't have the brain cells, or you have very powerful friends who are willing to risk themselves to protect you, and you actually have a plan that might actually succeed, well, then I guess it's more likely that people might join in your coup. But again, it's not what happened the first time. Donald Trump's first attempt was a complete and utter failure. Now, that said, so, so people tend to get confused about what the, what the coup really is. Okay? Uh, that coup is not the January 6th riot. No, the real coup was using fake electors. You had fake electors, media disinformation, put out by grifters, legal challenges that basically were wastes of time and money. Again, look at the, all the recounts in Arizona. You had all of that. Uh, and then, of course, you had um, challenges to things like, oh, uh, the scary terms like ballot harvesting, which was legal in a lot of places until the Republicans decided to ban it. All bar ballot harvesting is, is that you go around, you have a designated individual to go and collect ballots and then drop them off. Ballots that were filled out by other people. And again, if you're the designated person to go and pick up those ballots, there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, that helps in poor communities, communities of color. Oh, right, those tend to play, uh, places tend to vote for Democrats. But also, by the way, you could also do that for senior citizens so that they don't have to go out there uh, and vote. Or they can go and fill out their absentee ballot. Somebody can pick it up. It's actually more efficient. Makes sense. But no, no, Republicans hate that because it actually makes voting easier. And they can't do that. They don't want to do that because if they do make voting easier, well, then uh, they tend to lose more when more people vote. So that said, Trump used that media disinformation. Uh, and there were those fake electors. We'll get to that in Arizona. Uh, but there again, there were in other uh, key states like Michigan. Um that was part of it, and the goal was to create so much public doubt about the 2020 election and who actually won. I don't know. I don't know who won. Who won? I don't know. I don't know. I keep hearing different things from different people. I guess I don't know. I guess we'll just keep Trump into power or something. And again, we've also seen reports of Trump trying to use the military to seize voting machines so that, of course, we couldn't actually go and look at the voting machines to disprove the voter fraud narrative. And, of course, all of that would lead him to be able to stay into power. Now, William Barr uh, didn't go along with that. Mike Pence didn't go along with that. Georgia Secretary of State Bad Raffensperger didn't go with that. Hell, even Sean Hannity, Fox host, didn't go along with that. Laura Ingram, many of Trump's former staff members, they didn't go along with that, at least not at the beginning. So at the end of the day, they knew, maybe they knew that it was wrong. Or that it, they, of course, knew that it was based on a lie. And maybe they were concerned, at least for a minute, about democracy. And about protecting democracy as we know it in this country. Then again, I'm not also saying that these people really cared about our system of government for, you know, or what's best for our country. It seems like they don't. But at least what we know from privately... Their words and actions, even if disingenuous and just trying to protect their own ass, might have actually also helped to protect our democracy. At least for the time being. 